As long as one is not breaking the laws of physics, right. uh, it can be done. Yeah, we've been waiting for so long, and finally, that day has come. Elon Musk has just revealed Starship's all 33 engine static fire testing date after B7's 7 engines static fire. And we're getting really closer, and we are getting very close to an all engine static firing of Starship's massive first stage booster. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On September 19th, SpaceX continued testing its stainless steel Super Heavy Booster 7 vehicle. Its engines were fueled with cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Only seven Raptor V2 engines out of 33 were ignited on Monday afternoon. However, this is still a great milestone because it is the first time ever that they ignited seven engines simultaneously, resulting in a fireball on the pad. During Booster 7's previous static fire testing on August 31st, only three engines were ignited. Chamber pressure looked good on all seven engines, shared Musk via Twitter soon after the test. Now, let's enjoy that majestic sound. Do you notice it? Seven seconds, seven engines, Booster 7. Coincidence? I think not. It is great for clearing dust, Musk tweeted. Indeed, that was truly amazing. And that was still less than one-fourth of the total engines. And it still makes me excited to see all 33 light up. But when? When asked about when SpaceX will perform a static fire test of all 33 Raptor V2 engines simultaneously, Musk said the rocket will now undergo more preparations at the Starbase factory. Booster 7 now returns to high bay for robustness upgrades and Booster 8 moves to pad for testing, said Musk. Next big test is probably full stack wet dress rehearsal, then 33 engine firing in a few weeks. SpaceX is probably aiming for October for this historic test. To fully stack the vehicles, the Starbase Launch Tower's robotic arms will lift Starship SN24 atop the Super Heavy Booster 7 to perform pre-flight testing. When stacked, the vehicle is approximately 395 feet tall, or around 120 meters, making it the largest rocket ever manufactured. For a 33 engine firing, while the V2 design significantly simplifies Raptor's design to make it easier to build, install, and operate, it also substantially boosts maximum thrust from around 185 tons or around 410,000 pounds of force to at least 230 tons or around 510,000 pound force. In theory, Booster 7 could theoretically produce at least 40% more thrust than Booster 4. B4, however, has yet to attempt a single static fire. In another comparison, with an estimated 17 million pounds of thrust, SpaceX's Super Heavy is expected to produce more than twice the thrust of the SLS, if the development goes as planned. The next prototype to sit on the hot seat will be B8. It'll be going to the pad for cryogenic proof testing, so that means the test campaign for orbital flight number two is now on. At this point, there are no engines installed on Booster 8. Notably, it does have all chines and HPU covers, so it's certainly more complete than when Booster 7 first rolled out. This is also something worth looking forward to. However, there is sad news that SpaceX's Starship might not fly to orbit this year, as per a suggestion from a NASA document. The Starship Next Generation Launch Vehicle System might carry out its orbital test flight next year, according to a research paper from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. The paper, part of NASA's submission to the 73rd International Astronautical Congress, set to start today in France, uses publicly available information to share details about NASA's Artemis program. The document provides rare insights into NASA's plans for the Artemis program, which will use the agency's Space Launch System rocket to conduct flights to the lunar surface. While the first Artemis mission is slated to launch soon, after NASA fixes fuel leak problems in its supporting architecture, the third mission will become the first to land astronauts on the lunar surface. Today's research paper submitted by NASA officials to the IAC shares details on the agency's plans for the Artemis 3 mission. It outlines that as part of Artemis 3, astronauts will take to the skies from Earth and the SLS on board the Orion spacecraft. However, before this happens, Starship will first launch its propellant depot to orbit, followed by tanker Starships to fill the depot. Once the depot is filled, the Lunar Starship variant will lift off, 
fuel from the depot, then start its journey to the near rectilinear halo orbit, or NRHO, after performing a translunar injection. Once it reaches its destination and performs the necessary checkouts and tests, Starship will wait for the astronauts which will leave Earth on board the Orion spacecraft on the SLS. NASA also explains SpaceX's progress with Starship in the document, and it shares that after having completed Starship's 10-kilometer flight and landing, SpaceX is now focusing on the rocket's first orbital flight test. The paper was posted on NASA's Technical Reports server in August, and since it addresses IAC's conference for this year, it can be reasonably inferred that the wording suggests that the first Starship orbital flight will take place in 2023. However, this might not be the case since in the next year is still vague, and could imply the year after the 10-kilometer suborbital test flight, or 2022. Right now, SpaceX is also working on systems for Starship maneuvers and sequences to make it compatible with Orion for docking, as the two will pair together near the moon to transfer the astronauts from the latter to the former. Additionally, docking mechanisms of Starship with the propellant depot and thermal and meteoroid protection systems of the spacecraft have also been tested. Now that's just Starship news, but you're probably also very interested in NASA's SLS, right? NASA is now just a day away from a key fueling test of its new mega rocket that may make or break the space agency's chances of launching its Artemis 1 mission to the moon next week. The fueling test, which NASA will attempt on Wednesday, September 21st, will test repairs of two hydrogen leaks on the rocket called the Space Launch System, or as we know as the SLS as well as new, slower ways to fuel up the 32-story booster at 39A of the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If all goes well, NASA will make its third attempt to launch the Artemis 1 SLS rocket to the moon on September 27th after two false starts in recent weeks. We're not just setting ourselves up for the launch on September 27th, we're setting ourselves up for the future of this vehicle. Tom Whitmire, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Common Exploration Systems Development, told reporters in a teleconference Monday. So that's why we're taking the time and the effort to make sure we understand the vehicle. This time, hopefully everything can go well. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below because your support is the motivation for us to create more quality content. And for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time. Thank you.